pictures of him in a different country. They'd never seen anything like this before. Uh, extraordinary how at ease he, he looked, too, as he took his little tour around Singapore late, late at night before this summit, uh, appeared very relaxed uh, as he takes his place on the world stage, and, and yet his reputation precedes him as a, as a, a dictator and a despot. It is. It's interesting. It's just almost like the strange opposite irony that is, uh, is a guy giving a selfie. I think this has never been the case with any dictator that I've ever known about to do a to do a selfie. But then at the same time, the guy who, who's always smiling and he's meeting with uh, our own country, but it seems to be there's not going to be any real demands to changes in human rights that are going to be asked of Kim Jong-un by President Trump, but who knows? Not, anything can happen. But, you know, here's a guy that that certainly there was great hope when he came to power in 2012. He compared to his father, Kim Jong-il, who never spoke. He gave one short little speech years ago, Kim Jong-il, his father. Kim Jong-il talks all the time. Um, but he's also, but even though in the beginning he looks like he wanted to change the economy, he wasn't going to return to the same kind of dictatorship or at least the kind of of uh, a killing and, and, uh, and uh, you know, torture that, that his father had been engaged with, but then suddenly it all changed. Kim Jong-un turns out that he was just as brutal as his father, so maybe even more so, you know, clearly is all uh, accused of having ordered the, the killing of his own half, his, his uncle, also then his half-brother in Kuala Lumpur Airport, uh, and a guy who obviously a lot of people were executed as he outed the old team and brought in a new team as he, as he came to power. So here's the same guy that's down there giving selfies, uh, down there and meeting with the West, uh, the guy who did this type of activity while he's been the leader of that country.